the why. So, Kim, let's go ahead and get into that. So, one, everyone had, I think that at some point or another, everyone had their reason or their person um, that fell victim to police brutality um, that made them say, oh, my God, that could have been me or it could have been my right. son or it could have been my friend, my sister. So, the people that we have in front of us, I'm sure that you've seen their pictures on social media. You've probably heard their stories. But it's still not really been resolved. And it seems like now, uh, with the current administration that we have right now, what always happens is once um, there's some su suspicion that something is unlawful, as far even as, you know, out of the authority of what the cop should have done or they didn't follow procedures what you always hear is that they'll say okay we're going to do an internal investigation which ultimately the highest point of that is for them to go to the justice department and in the trump administration the the justice department is headed by jeff sessions and i know i don't know if you watch saturday night live or if you've seen any of the comedians that's the one they always call the keebler elf right and they always <laughs> make fun of him and he's like this little guy so he's been charged with being a racist for years now. Back in 1986, he was running to be a part of the Judiciary Committee, um, or he was going to be a federal judge or something like that. And during, his, during the committee hearings, one of the people were like, um, okay, no, we should not let him do this because we've, we've heard him say the N-word before. He's been accused of using the N-word. Mm -hmm. And he allegedly made a comment saying that, you know, he didn't mind the KKK and what they did. He actually, you know, was for them until he found out that they smoked weed. So when your country is being led by people with this sort of a mentality, it's hard to say, you know, and that's what Colin Kaepernick is bringing attention to. It's hard to get justice when even at its highest level in this country, it's, it's not fair. Anything, it's hard to get anything done in this country. And I've said this on several different episodes that we had. This country was built off crooks. This country right. was built off prisoners you know what i'm saying right so it's like it was people that were protesting right. that brought the, that made break. this country what it is they were right. protesting what their government was doing right. so they came over here it, so it's, it's like not much opinion like you know this episode is not much opinion i mean the proof is in the pudding like right, right, right. before we started filming like all of these deaths this this not even the tip of the iceberg this is just some of them this is just four out of you know several dozen if if i'm if that you right. know what i mean and it's just like it's just gotten to the point where enough is enough like we can sit up here and we can say hey they took the black panthers away from us we can sit up here and say hey, i mean it does like i always this, say we can't do that but yeah. it's all it's all facts and it goes back to us as a community we have to start sticking together we have to start watching what our children doing we have to start back bonding we have to start voting we have to get more more we have of us I, I the, just the mentality of I'm gonna worry about my own. You worry about your own. We have to get out of that mentality, and we have to unite. We have right. to do this shit together. Like she was just getting ready to say, it comes down to the voting. It comes down to educating yourself of who the fuck is in your jurisdiction or your district. Like all of that plays, all of that plays. A part. And it's just coincidentally that you know Colin Kaepernick plays for the NFL that's the company that he works for so that's what he did he took a knee I don't think everybody's like oh you know I don't I don't think everybody your calling may not be to protest your calling might be to not buy or whatever or to invest in a black business everyone has their own calling but we all have to play our part and figure out where we fit in in that and even like when i, I always say and everybody always like <laughs> says i'm just like oh what well, everything can't be in the 90s it's not that it's just that you know what you feed your mind comes out of your mouth all the time well, so you if mean? you if you um if you definitely want to have at least a balance like you know we had fun we had some some crazy stuff going on you know what i mean everybody does but you have to have a balance like imagine how you made it cool back then it was a part of the culture like hip-hop had this backpack they used to call them the backpack guys or whatever um the backpack team where you know they just talked about consciousness and elevation and and and, and freeing your mind you know what i mean imagine if but you seriously. had that and made it cool to be a part right. of the process you know what i mean right. it, empowering the youth to everybody parties and gets high or whatever but, well not everybody but, but you know what i mean so my thing is we call it the why so, so why is Sandra Bland get why why did she get killed? She got killed 
because she got pulled over and I was living in, in the Houston area um, back then. She got pulled over by this cop. Did you did you remember that? I remember. Okay, so she got pulled over for uh, her not failing to signal. Mm -hmm. And when the cop pulls her over, she was smoking a cigarette. And so, you know, she was kind of like, well, why are you pulling me over? You know, it was confusing because, you know, it was it was petty. So she questioned why she was being pulled over. Right. She, she didn't get conscious. killed right then and there like a lot of these unfortunate victims were. She went to jail. And in the Waller County Jail, she was found dead. What she was she allegedly got hung. Um, and I, since I was there, I participated in a lot of the hearings. I would go down and, like, I met her sister and her mom and stuff like that. Because for me, this was the one that hit home for me. Because I'm not from Texas. She wasn't from Texas. She had just moved there. She lived there alone. It was just, This was the one. I she, and Trayvon, she and Trayvon. She and Trayvon hit me the most. Not that was because those were the ones. The state, but yeah, they hit me the most because it's like we. A lot of people don't probably know about this, but we had some what we call the candy lady. Even though he went to the store, like yeah. he had Skittles in, in Arizona in his hand. Now imagine like I like I sit here and I think about that to this day as I'm older. Like, what if that was my child going to the store? What if that was my, my child was going his to the age store? when that or happened? My nephew yeah, going it, it could have been like, anybody. Come on, man! Like, but that goes back to the mentality, and that got like I said on a previous episode, or actually, <laughs> this is what I was saying um, mm -hmm. when we went up to the Cobb County Jail because you know it was a you could get that cop out of there before he does do anything that Cobb right, County exactly. cop that had pulled over that lady and, and then he was like oh yeah. you know we only kill black folks it, we had a chance to get him out of there before it even got any worse and that's what when I was up there and the guy from the news was asking me you know well what do you think I said well if your mentality if you're still mentally at a place where you think that black people or brown people are a threat to you you're in the wrong profession you are in the wrong profession. And I yep. think cops need to out other cops. They need to have ethnicity ethnicity training. They need to have tolerance training. It's they not need to, that they don't. It's whatever they, they, they need don't, to do. But you have to understand, too, with the white cops, it's like inside the police. The police force itself is a fucking cult. Right, and right, right. In yeah. that cult, there's other cults. There's other groups. So I'm sure all the white cops get together and they have their own cult where... They it's handle like a cult, black people yeah. a certain way, or they handle black women a certain way, or where they handle these kids a certain way, and it's just like it's fucked up. But like I said, there was there's no nothing at this point, honestly, Kim, and I'm so frustrated by it because I feel like at this point there's nothing the system can do about it. We have to take care of it in our community. That's if we with take everything. Care of it in our community, That's with everything. Then that's it with will, everything. Shit will change. That's with everything. Like we were talking about every episode, we always come down. That's always the solution. Us taking care of each other. There was no conviction in this case. Um, the cop was brought up on perjury charges. Those, char those charges were dropped. He got fired. That was like the most. I that, think the one that they, pissed they me off him. the most. Um, the one that pissed me off the most, and I'm sorry to cut you off again. Okay. The one that pissed me off the most was the boy that got killed um, here in the state of Georgia. They found him rolled up in the mat. Not only was he rolled up in the mat, but he was missing organs. Then they had the nerve to say he put himself in the mat. How the fuck you gonna put yourself in the mat? How the fuck you gonna take your own organs out? Like, where I see, like, I, this, I don't, that, that's I don't, the shit that, yeah. like, come on, like, but who, what, who, shit. but I, what happened with that? They dropped the case. Apparently, the guy, I think his, his name was something, Bell. Um, I had to do my research on it. He didn't get convicted. He didn't get convicted of it. Like, he was a, he was in the FBI, like, and they dropped the shit. They was like, fuck it. Apparently, whatever part of Georgia they in, like, they, they were some pretty powerful people. The family is pretty powerful people, and he know pretty powerful people, so they dropped the case. Right. And the thing that's killing me with a lot of these situations is, like, they're trying to give family settlements. Like, they're trying to give yeah, them a million they dollars. Them. They're trying to give them five million dollars. And, like, you know what? Yeah, you lost a family member. Shut the fuck up. You can live the rest of your life comfortably. No, the fuck we can't. Money does not bring back our loved ones. Money does not help us raise our black men. Like, all that so then why do we is putting us in a mentality where money covers everything. And money does not cover anything. It does not cover it at all. I'm sorry. So why do we and that why do we then as people and I say this all the time hold money to be the highest form of I mean we hold being rich because to that's a high what, that's regard. What our country was built on our country was built on that currency. So until we go back and uh, and realize that there's something fundamentally wrong with a lot of the information that we've always gotten for our entire our entire lives until we unravel all of that we're going to continue to have these problems. So 
another one that was really big for the internet because the his girlfriend went live on Facebook was Philando Castile. Mm-hmm. Um, the cop pulled him over. He was licensed to carry a weapon. He uh, went to go get his wallet, and the cop shot him. Immediately, the cop realized that what he did was wrong um, and said, oh, no, you know, but still there was no conviction. It's like you could, they, they gave body cams as a reason or a way to and prevent this. And they turn this. them off, and they and don't get penalized for turning them off. Then they, um, you know, then when you see clearly what happened on live Facebook, and I mean, there was no conviction. He was not convicted of second-degree murder. Um, Tamir Rice was also heartbreaking for a lot of people because he had a toy gun, and the cop thought it was real. But, but that, that I also I also noticed a pattern too. Um, Kim, before you get into that, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm gonna say this: he had a toy gun, right? Mm-hmm. But that goes back to what I was saying. Even though it was a toy gun, he shouldn't have had the gun. He. With the shit that's going on, that's and that's what I say. We we have to get back into that teaching our kids certain things. You know what I mean? If I know that there's a high chance of my child being stopped by, a cop I don't think that something is going. I don't. On, I think I don't think there was anything was wrong done, with what he had but, on. I don't think it was wrong for him to have had a toy gun. Um, I don't think that even if it were wrong in t- in someone's mind that he had that gun, that his punishment should have been to to get killed. He like there should there's, there's, there's definitely got killed, but some de escalation processes that aren't going on. We have to take. He's fourteen. He was fourteen. He was fourteen, but so I, I knew kids in my neighborhood at eight nine years old. Having real guns, totally well, real guns. I mean, this, let's start that's, there. That's the, <laughs> that, and that's why I say it starts back with us. Like we have to take precaution. Like if we know that these things are going on in our community, like we have to teach our kids. Like no, in certain you got to if if you got a toy gun, you keep that in the house. I remember at time like my parents wouldn't even let me have toy guns, like at all, like water guns, nothing at all, because that's how serious that's how serious guns work. Well, you know I, mean? I mean, I don't I don't think there was anything wrong with it. I don't think that we should have to adjust our lives for someone else's ignorance. True enough. And I mean, there's like I said there should be some de-escalation or whatever, but anyway